Uh, Ellie Mae Barnes, welcome to Australian Musician. Lovely to meet you. Thank you for having me. I, I can imagine there was a lot of music happening uh, in your childhood in the Barnes family household. Do you remember when you first discovered your own musical tastes, perhaps some artists that, that the rest of the family weren't into? I do actually remember it. Um, I remember very early on, it definitely, it definitely wasn't a quiet childhood that I have, as you mentioned, it was a very musical childhood. I was exposed to a whole lot of music growing up. I heard, you know, my dad had very varied taste and playlists. Um, and I was very, very happy to be hearing all sorts of music. And I enjoyed most things that I heard. But I remember at one point hearing Blue Suede Shoes and being like, who's that? Um, or I think seeing even a video of Elvis in 1956 it was I remember seeing a video of 1956 Elvis and asking dad who it was mm -hmm. and I was five years old okay and I loved I loved so for, at five I loved Elvis from 1956 to 1968 that was my favorite and um Jackson 5 Michael um and Whitney in the bodyguard era. Okay. And I... silver chair as well. <laughs> so very specific eras of uh, some of the artists. Well, at five, that was kind of my thing, but I, I grew to, you know, I was also listening to everything dad was listening to all the rock and Bob Dylan and all those things. And, you know, Tom Petty and. Yeah. What, what um, um, vocal stylists, who were the artists that you began singing along to? Well, when I was five, I would lock myself in my room and listen to um, my first CDs were those ones. Um, and particularly young Michael Jackson was my first aspirational vocal styling. Um, and I thought, okay, the first thing I have to be is a young Michael Jackson. <clears throat> I can't dance, so I'm behind already. <laughs> and I was furious about that. Um, I, I would not sing the uh, other brother's parts. I would only do Michael's parts. And I would um, sing along to my CD. And if I got the parts wrong, I would start the CD again. Yeah. <laughs> um and that was when I was very yeah five um and I thought if my door was closed that nobody could hear but apparently everybody could and I um I did not achieve young Michael Jackson status unfortunately so I um had to move on uh, not yet anyway no unfortunately um I've accepted that that is something you have to just have um so um it's okay you have to be yourself yeah <laughs> so fast forward to uh april 12th this year and all of that yeah. musical influence uh has gone into an album that's coming out called no good uh, yeah why did no good become the title track um i suppose uh <laughs> There's a huge part of me that is quite self-deprecating if you spend about five minutes with me. Um, and also, you know, beats people to the punch, doesn't it? But, um, and it was also for me, that song was just a really fun song for me. It was one of the first ones, Davy Lane, is one of my favorite musicians firstly one of the most talented people i know and one of the most kind and wonderful people i know he's the sweetest man in rock and roll i always say and yet um i tried to write at the time when i was a teenager which which is like you know how long this has all been going on um tried to write the meanest song I could because um, <laughs> I'm not very tough 
I don't know if you're getting that vibe. Um, but, uh, you know, so I think that we all have different parts of ourselves and I was trying to express that part of myself that maybe needed to be a little tougher and try and set some boundaries and, um, and, and I thought that'd be good for Davey too. We, we were trying to be tough. And so we were there giggling and trying to be mean and write no good. And yeah, so that that was an exercise in boundaries <laughs> and being tougher than I am. And I'm working on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think no, no good is, you know, an exercise in bringing out another character in myself as well. And I think that it's a good title track because it's part of bringing out confidence in myself. Yeah, sure. Um, you have some amazing people uh, on the album, um, all people close to you and, and your family. Was it just a matter of asking them to be part of the project? Did, did you put the word out and see who would respond? How did, how did that work? Well, like, I mean, things like No Good, they were just sort of like, I I the album, like a lot of the songs happened because I was like enjoying writing with my friends and things like that because I um, was getting comfortable writing and things like that. It happened to be with some of the best people because that is who I happened to be around luckily and who are sweet enough to, you know, be kind and be, you know, want to do that with me. But um, I also then eventually when this project came around, suddenly it just all happened. All these beautiful people that I loved suddenly were just around me and it just happened. And for some reason it just was easy and just worked. And everyone that I've grown up with and loved was just there and it was just like, wait a minute. Um, suddenly it was just all all meant to happen I don't know it just seemed to work and I don't know why all of these incredible I mean their family and you know I love them all but why should it's like why should all of these people give their time to me it you know it still makes no sense to me <laughs> um they're too wonderful and beautiful and um, it blows my mind and, you know, it um, just is, like, wonderful. Yeah. Um, as, you, as you said, but, Davey Lane um, is a big part of the album and he's such has such yeah. great um, pop music sensibility. I, I recently saw him uh, with Todd Rundgren uh, running, mm. that, running that show. Um, I can see how... He can he, do anything. Yeah, I can see how you two would click musically. Um, with, oh, we, was writing, so he's one of my favourites. Yeah, was song, writing songs with him easy? Well, yeah, because I am, I'm, I'm naturally, you know, I, 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 I'm not very comfortable in that sphere and I can't play instruments. And so Davey was one of the first people I could do that with because I I'm I don't mind embarrassing myself with Davy. He's so beautiful and so sweet and so kind and he is he would never judge me and um and so we've been friends for what feels like most of my life, you know, and um we've been through so much together that he he is he is family and um and um so with Davy, um I was so comfortable and he just made it so easy that I know anything we make together will be um good because he's so talented but also I can embarrass myself and we can bring it back <laughs> um of all the Cole Chisel songs available uh why did you decide to do 20 the 20th century which was renamed <laughs> 21st century for this album um it was w weirdly i it weirdly just a, a sort of interesting phone conversation that kind of started as like a um i, I was 
I need, I, I was after this kind of, I wanted this vibe. I, I needed this kind of um, vibe from, and I was sort of teasing Don actually. He'd written his really beautiful album and I was just teasing him being like, oh, you know, did you write a Blondie song on your last album? I feel like, you know, this record could do with a bit of a Blondie song. Um, <laughs> and um, I was just teasing him and he's like, well, it wasn't really that kind of record. Huh. And I was like, I, I know, Don, I just heard it. It's really beautiful. Um, and he's like, I did write one song that was that kind of a tempo actually and and it was um 20th century and then I kind of listened to it and and if if you kind of kind of listen to it different and produce it different it could have been a blondie song and I was like hey Don why don't you write me 21st century and he's like actually that's quite funny and then um he just emailed me one day with new words and um and then it's the fortieth. It's the fortieth anniversary of of twentieth century. So, it just feels like you know. And and Don's such a great songwriter, and for him to actually want to do that is crazy. And for me to be joking, at, you know, um, and and to think that he would even consider being involved. Um, because in my mind, you know, a passing comment from me is one thing, but for him to actually think about it is a whole nother, you know, <laughs> kettle of fish. Yeah. Um, so all of these things are, you know, have just built up into this amazing, crazy thing and um and to be able to pay tribute to something that was a huge part of you know really my family's history as well um is amazing and you know yeah. I, I i love that yeah um pressures to ashes is probably my favorite song on on the album written with <laughs> uh, jackson freud the son of uh the models james freud um yeah my oh, pal yeah how was that songwriting experience and that how did the the songwriters differ that you were writing with so that one was like so whoa that was ages ago that was you know um Jackson is incredible he's got this amazing brain he's an incredible songwriter as well and that that one you know was mainly written by Jackson, I've got to say. Um, he is a, a genius, you know, that, like, that boy, that man, he now is writing other different kind of music that is also incredible. He can do anything. He could write books. He could do anything. Um Production wise, he could do anything as well. Um, when we're in the studio, he could play everything. Um, his brain is also, you know, he's the same. And again, I could embarrass myself with Jackson, and um, it was fine because we were we were friends. We grew up together as well, and um, and it was um, it was okay to be silly and say the wrong thing and we could also you know um but with crashes to ashes that was interesting because um as our dynamic changed the song changed um and and then yeah interestingly I ended up that song changed again you know um in the you know in the recording process because obviously years later it doesn't feel the same um because when you're a teenager uh things are different <laughs> mm. and um and at the time that that was written uh, a lot was happening for Jackson and 
and and a lot was happening for me in a different way and so you know it was a very different time and now like I'm a mom and I'm you know doing a whole lot of different stuff and he's you know in a whole different place himself so it's just crazy um we're just in both different worlds but um and to be able to still like work on that song and be like hey how, how are you with this now and be like I love it it's kind of cool um and um I love that we're we've got finally crashes to ashes to this place where it's finished because um I can't tell you how much time we spent in the studio um working on that song <laughs> when we were kids uh, um song to Bob uh written with Shane Nicholson and uh, I, I guess mm-hmm. Shane a, uh, yeah. a traumatic experience I'm sure for him <laughs> I I guess that was a, a lovely, <laughs> that lovely that little one. Bob Dylan is it yes yes it is um that is for Bob Dylan um so um song to Bob uh so on on Bob Dylan's uh uh, debut record he um he wrote song to woody yep. which tribute to woody guthrie um his favorite um folk singer um and so i felt that on my um debut album it was important that i had song for Bob because um Bob Dylan was my favorite uh folk singer <laughs> mm. and my son is called Dylan oh okay um so I um and I, yeah I'm a, a a pretty big Bob Dylan fan I've I've done like two two sonic journeys with Simon Marnie on a- ABC or oh, I, I think I've just record a second one that'll come out at some point but um but uh oh no wait I've done one but um (laughs) but uh then um I so song to Bob was really important to me and then um and Bob Dylan is huge influence on my on my writing because uh, lyrics are really important to me like I was a literature nerd in school <laughs> if I didn't like get into music I wanted to be maybe like a writer yeah. maybe yeah. write a book or something uh, um, do you, do you so that might happen at some point uh yeah I think I want to write a children's book and I would definitely um love to get into other literature as well for sure yeah. um I, I definitely love love writing um but in um so song to bob is a tribute to bob dylan uh but i decided that um in there's been a lot of tributes to bob so mine should be a little bit of a love song yeah. um because he's you know he's written a lot of beautiful love songs as well and he's getting into his 80s so maybe he deserved a, a nice love song. Your your uncle uh, Mark Lazot Diesel also plays a big part, yeah. in, part in the album. Uh, contributes uh, songs, production, mixing, guitar. Even though he's a close family member, does his talent still surprise you? Um, beyond um, Uncle Mark Lazot <laughs> um, is like I I didn't I couldn't believe that he got involved and that he contributed what he did and it blows my mind um to this day and what what he did contribute is um you know just phenomenal and it is you know exactly what more than what I could have hoped for and he also put me in a space where I could um bring out 
pieces of myself, some of which I wasn't like, didn't even know were there. And it was good. It was like I could explore spaces and be really comfortable. And that was the thing about working with everybody that I love is just being so comfortable and um, and everybody just making it such a safe and comfortable, happy space, which is exactly what your first album should be. Um, but it's made it such a roller coaster and such a fun, um, wild thing. I don't know if that's what everyone wants to listen to, but it's certainly what's inside my brain. Everybody that is on here are people that I love and are extremely talented and I am like yeah blown away by what they have created and I yeah I'm yeah I'm really proud and I um and I don't really um I don't understand how I've I got this lucky at this point Sorry, will we see a, a tour, a tour or performances of the album? I really hope so. Um, that's sort of the next little hurdle. Um, I'm putting together a pretty killer band. Um, I just have to try and get some gigs. Really, uh, the issue now is whether um, I can get on some supports or see if I can get some venues to to book us some little shows or, um, uh, yeah, see who wants to book us um, at this point. <laughs> yeah, or see who, who see who listens to the record, see who, um, see who wants to come see us. So um, that's the next, um, see, see what the market is, I guess. Yeah. So is there a grand plan for Ellie Mae Barnes? Um... I, I guess my plan is to just um hopefully people um hopefully someone likes um my songs and if they do they might want to see a show that would be nice because um the band are really nice and um like like everybody else who worked on the record everybody's really cool and friendly and plays really good, nice and um I just want to keep doing cool stuff and um and like I made um I made all the artwork for the booklet and did all this collaging and stuff um so I've done like a collage competition for the pre-order so I've got to do a bit of collaging um for whoever wins um <laughs> and then I'm writing a kids book and um you know seeing what happens next and hopefully hopefully yeah get on the road and um I yeah hopefully no good um isn't isn't no good um and that um oh I'm glad you like crashes to ashes Jack's not be happy yeah. um <laughs> yeah. um great song in fact it's a, it's a great album and you should be really proud of it Thank you so much. I'm I'm really glad you like it because, you know, I mean, no no one's really got to hear it yet, so it's really cool cool that you like it. Um, yeah. I'm I'm really really glad to hear that. Yeah. It's really exciting. I'm just really excited to have it have it out there because it's it's all done, you know. Um, and I've been procrastinating for I don't know ever. Well, it's been great to chat. Great to meet you, and uh, all the best with it all. Yeah, all the best to you too. Lovely to chat to you. All right. We'll catch you next time.